Welcome back to the third state of the New York Rangers. This season is flying by. At this point, the Rangers are playing 500 hockey with their offense picking up. Not too many injuries since the 4th of March. We will talk about Igor's injury because that is kind of a big one. However, Jack Johnson will miss the rest of the season and most likely has played his last game as a New York Ranger after having hernia surgery. Now speaking of the Igor injury, Igor Shosturkin and the New York Rangers take on the New Jersey Devils on March 4th. They win 6-1, Chris Kreider with the hat trick and the New York Rangers are able to get 2 points in the first game against the Devils of this 2 game set. Igor Shosturkin had a mild groin injury but it looked bad. It looked like an injury that could have kept Shosturkin out for the whole season, however it was announced the day after that it would be day to day with his situation, which ended up becoming week to week. Two days later on the 6th of March, the Rangers vs the Devils once again. And another 6 goals put up on the Devils by the Blue Shirts. They actually had a 2-0 lead in the first period. Before the first period could even end, the Devils tie it and then the Rangers take the lead again. 3-2 after the first period. Kevin Rooney with a goal to give the Rangers the lead. The Rangers were able to turn it around in the last 40 minutes. Ryan Strom with two goals and Adam Fox with a power play goal. The March 7th and March 9th games against the Pittsburgh Penguins. They cannot beat Pittsburgh. The Penguins have the Rangers number this season. The Penguins are able to just defuse the Rangers offense. A game can't be won in the first period, but it certainly can be lost. Three goals in the first period of game one by the Penguins. This propels them over the Rangers. 5-1 to one in Game 1. And then Game 2, the Rangers were getting a lot of shots on goal. A lot more offensive zone time. They had 35 total shots, and Pittsburgh blocked 23 shots. The Rangers were not scared to throw pucks against the net, but the Penguins were able to get out of it, and they win it again against the Rangers. March 11th, my birthday, and the anniversary of The Pause. The Rangers looked flat against the Bruins. They lose 4 to nothing against them. Not too much energy in that game. The Rangers looked flat. They just they, they looked like they didn't want to be there. But you got to give credit to the Bruins. They showed how dominant they can be sometimes. They just completely shut down the Rangers. They weren't able to generate any high scoring chances. And they were 0 for 4 on the power play. The second game of that back-to-back -back set with the Bruins, the Rangers flipped the script on Boston and win 4 nothing. Their penalty kill was 5 for 5. A really good team effort by the New York Rangers. Keith Kincaid only sees 18 shots and he'll get the shutout as the Rangers win 4 nothing against the Bruins. And then back to back with the Philadelphia Flyers. The Rangers fall down 2 nothing early in game 1 against the Flyers. They're able to actually take the lead 3 to 2 in the second period. And then in the third period the Rangers give up two power play goals, one to Joel Farabee and one to Claude Giroux to tie the game 4-4. Jacob Voracek will later go on to win it in overtime. The Rangers only 3 for 5 on the penalty kill and it was most likely the difference of this game. It was announced after this game that the whole coaching staff will miss at least a couple weeks due to COVID protocol. Chris Knobloch, the Hartford head coach, will take over from now on. And in Chris Knobloch's first game as a head coach, yeah, 9-0 by the Rangers is a franchise night. For Mika Zibanejad, he had 6 points in the second period, including a natural hat trick. It was a 9-0 explosion on the Philadelphia Flyers and on national television. The Rangers, yeah, you definitely want to think about that one as time goes on. And the Flyers, yeah, they're throwing that right out the window. Georgiev with the goose egg in that one. On the 19th and 20th of March, a back-to-back -back in Washington, the Rangers could have easily taken 4 out of 4 points against the Capitals. The Rangers lose Game 1 thanks to two identical goals scored by Alexander Ovechkin on rebounds in front of the net. The Rangers were leading 1-0 until the third period at this time. That game really stung and the Rangers could have easily come out with the 2 points there. The next game, a late goal thanks to Mika Zibanejad stripping the puck away from Brendan Dillon. He makes it 2-1 with around 3 minutes left to go. The Rangers and an empty net goal thanks to Brett Howden. Happy birthday, Brett Howden, by the way, today. The Rangers walk away with 2 of 4 points from Washington after 2 outstanding defensive games against one of the better offensive teams in the National Hockey League. 
Now, the Sabres on the 22nd was a we-have-to-win game. The Rangers were able to score some goals against Dustin Tokarski. However, in the early third period, the Rangers were up 3-1, to one and Buffalo scored two goals to tie the game. I didn't want to bash the Rangers for giving up the two goals. The first goal in the third period to make it 3-2 to two was by Dylan Cousins. It was kind of a scramble in their own end, and the puck popped out to Dylan Cousins with an amazing shot. Makes it 3-2, to two, and then the Rangers get caught in a change on the third goal. Jeff Skinner breakaway, he was getting robbed all night by Keith Kincaid with that windmill save. Great save. Yeah, Jeff Skinner scores to tie it up, but then the Rangers, they don't get rattled. They stay composed, and they were able to take the lead in the third period and win the game in regulation. The next two games are up against the Philadelphia Flyers. Igor Shosturkin gets his first start since March 4th, and yeah, in game one, a little bit of deja vu. The Rangers win 8-3, and I'm going to be honest, I said this in the pregame, I did not expect the Rangers to explode on Philadelphia like they did again. Mika Zibanejad with another natural hat trick, Adam Fox with 5 points. It was amazing the way the Rangers were able to route Philadelphia once again. But after they scored their 6th goal, the Rangers kind of sat back a little bit. They weren't into the crowd as much, they weren't at home, they couldn't really stay engaged in a 6 nothing game. However, they were still able to get the job done against a struggling Philadelphia Flyers team. And here on the 27th, the next game against the Flyers, this is where the closer game must have came from. The Rangers lose 2-1 thanks to Sam Moran's late third period goal. Philadelphia scored a power play goal to tie it thanks to Nolan Patrick. The Rangers took two penalties, one on the penalty kill. They killed off the five on three, but then with about 10 seconds left on the second penalty, Nolan Patrick deflection in front of the net. The Rangers' only goal that game was a power play goal by Mika Zibanejad. It would have been so sweet for the New York Rangers to possibly win this game. They were tied with the Philadelphia Flyers for 5th in the division and only 3 points at the time behind Boston for the 4th spot in the division, which is the playoff line. Yesterday, the Rangers and Capitals on Sunday the 28th. David Quinn, his first game behind the bench in a couple weeks. The New York Rangers only had 11 shots in the first 40 minutes of play. They had 9 in the 3rd period. Early in the third period, the Capitals take a 4-0 lead thanks to Evgeny Kuznetsov, and the Rangers just had no offense going. The Rangers make it 4-2 in the third period thanks to a pair by the birthday boy, Colin Blackwell. And then at this point, the Rangers start playing with some urgency. TJ Oshie does make it 5-2 Washington, but with the Rangers' power play goal thanks to Chris Kreider and Alexei Lafreniere's rebound goal, it's all of a sudden 5-4 with a few minutes left. The Rangers could possibly tie the game. They're showing a lot of urgency and putting a lot of pressure on the Capitals in their own end. And then when they pulled Kincaid, it's like the Rangers just took the foot right off the gas. They weren't even getting a shot on goal with their goalie pulled. It, it sucked. Since March 4th, the Rangers are 7-6-1. All of these stats that I'm about to throw at you are since March 4th. The Rangers lead the league with 54 goals scored and are 21st with 38 goals against. But that number is a little deceiving. They are 13th in the NHL in goals against per game. Their power play has had bright spots over the last few weeks. They are 10th in the NHL since March 4th with a 24.5%. And their penalty kill is 6th with 86.1%. The Rangers are starting to score more goals and their penalty kill has been consistent throughout the whole season. Now these stats are from the whole season. Pavel Buchnevich, Ryan Strom, and Artemi Panarin are all averaging at least 0.9 points per game. Panarin is averaging a goal and a quarter per game. Mika Zibanejad is heating up with 11 goals and 16 assists. And Adam Fox is becoming a franchise defenseman right before our eyes. And Chris Kreider leads the team with 17 goals. The Rangers have about 20 games left in the regular season to try to make a playoff push. I think it's possible. I think the Rangers, if they consistently play like they've been playing, good defense, being able to score goals, and of course a solid penalty kill, you never know what could happen with the way especially Philadelphia is struggling. Boston does have some games in hand, but there is plenty of time left for the New York Rangers. The next time we'll be sitting down like this will be for the trade deadline, April 12th. Be here for the live stream. It's going to be very exciting. Already, Brendan Lemieux was traded in between the Flyers game and the Capitals game yesterday. So, we'll see what else the trade deadline brings for the New York Rangers. I appreciate all of you guys watching. Please leave a like down below if you did enjoy. Check out a couple of the reaction videos if you haven't seen them already. And I'll see you guys later.